Oh boy, oh boy, here we go. Ah, it is Mr. Young. And it's foreign in the building. How are you, Mr. Young? I'm doing all right. All I have to say is, look in my eyes. What do I see? Tony Khan giving me lots of money. <laughs> it's a good time to be a CM Punk and it's a good time to be a CM Punk fan, bro. Uh, what's going on, everybody? I hope you're doing all right. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, the, uh, the chat is buzzing already over on YouTube. Div Royalty, hello. Muhammad Daniel. Uh, Edison, it's always good to see you. Tovakin, what's up? Fias, yo. Yo, we got our usuals in the house. I, I know you guys are getting juicy all up in this place. <laughs> John, how are you, by the way? Um... Div Royalty says, haven't watched, finish watching, uh, haven't watched, finish watching. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I said. Uh, haven't watched, finish Raw yet. I haven't even started watching Raw, let alone finish, bro. Let us know how Raw was. I heard there was two damn good matches. Uh, apparently, we had Gunther versus Kevin Owens. Ooh. So that should be a banger. And then, uh, of course, the main event, Damien Priest challenging Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight title, right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah, I mean, how good does it sound to have Damien Priest in the main event challenging for the World title? Like, we all know he's not going to win, but still, it's like, okay, it's a step part really. Like, it's like ah, I can see that maybe they think that this guy has potential, right? I know it's good for deep royalty, like, especially. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. Uh, it's good to see you, Rishi, as well. How are you guys doing? Samoan up, Spike. Guys? Edison says, acknowledge your podcast, boys, or else I Samoan Spike. Ah, day one. Ride or die. Day one. Day one. I love it. I love it. Guys, thank you so much for always supporting us. You all are our day ones. Mm. Uh, you know, this is on our... Are we 16th episode here for this season, Mr. Young? Yeah. Season six. six. Bro. Woo! It's, it's perfect. You know, the Marvel main universe is what? 616 this episode 616 main continuity bro bro is this across the spider-verse only or just uh, (laughs) you see that segue there bro i know and not only that right get this today is Mm. the 6th of june 66 616 bro oh hey guys buy can buy 4d today bro look listening to this podcast three episodes episodes later we need to do a booyaka special oh yeah (laughs) 619 Hey, uh, today all about the numbers. What is this numeral numer- numerology podcast? What's mm, going on? Numero uno, bro. Wait, wait. First of all, I, I wanted to ask you: Have you checked out the new Spider-Man uh, movie, oh, bro? No time, bro. I've been so busy. I will try to catch it this week. I will mm-hmm. try to do something I've never done before, bro. And you know what that is? What is that, bro? Go to the theater and buy tickets, as opposed to oh, booking but- online. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, what's up with this new change of uh, routine, Mr. Young? Because, because I happen to have these free complimentary passes that <laughs> I got. Uh, and I want to use them, but I can only show up there and buy tickets. Cannot book in advance one. Ah, and, okay, okay. So going old school, uh, yeah. this week. And, and I'm thinking that because I will always try to watch at like a, like, you know, afternoon, uh, people at work, busy, uh, uh, then mm. can find seats. You know what I'm saying? I got a question, Mr. Young. How how do I convince my girlfriend who is doesn't like animated movies uh, <laughs> to watch uh to watch this show? I want to I want hey. to try to convince her that this is actually a good movie. But how? Have, has she not watched the first one? No, she hasn't watched the first one as well. Alamak. Okay, get her to watch the first one. I believe it's on Disney Plus already. The first one will convince her. Like personally, I'm not a huge fan of animated movies like mm-hmm. this as well. But when you see how like, and I know your girlfriend is a very like you know that artistic sort right mm. artisticness and you watch you you remember the first one like it looked amazing of course yes everything is a graphic oil painting like that right and then the music as well confirms mm-hmm. you were like okay okay thanks I will, I will clip this and I'll send it to her later <laughs> <laughs> ah, happy birthday Muhammad Daniel yesterday was his birthday like, happy birthday yo happy birthday my brother how old are you bro are you are you like hitting the 30s where are you at right now let us know <laughs> Uh, Ask people to reveal their age. Uh. That's why, yeah. Uh? Uh, okay, as always, the Discord link is in the description. If you haven't joined us on Discord yet, what are you waiting for? Come and join the group, the family, and talk wrestling anytime you want. Join the bloodline. It's in the Discord. Yeah, yeah man, because the bloodline is going to like break up soon. Like, so might as well we start our own bloodline. I'm still, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, we got that. And then we got our Patreon link as well. You can join us. Uh, Extend your support for the podcast. However you can, we appreciate it. All right, guys? 
Yeah, of course, for sure. Okay, let's right dive right into the news because we got some big news stories coming out from this past week. Yeah, Mister Yang. Hmm. Uh, big news as it relates to AEW and also WWE. Which one do you want to jump into first? That's the question. I- I think let's do chronological order. So I guess right out of double or nothing, the last episode we we damn crazy, bro. We review how many we had like almost a three hour podcast reviewing both Night of Champions and Double or Nothing, right? Right. Uh, and then just nice as we were recovering, AEW Dynamite <laughs> came on, and uh, for the third week in the row, our favorite guy Tony Khan had an announcement to make. Thanks, guys. Um, okay, so <laughs> at this point, right, when it comes to his um, <clears throat> special announcement, right, it's it's less cringe the more he does it, but still it's very cringe. Like, he's obviously standing there in front of a teleprompter reading off a script. But, you know, if this is the... Okay, if this is the extent of his announcements, I can I can take it lah. It's fine lah. It's, it's not so okay, bad lah. Fine. Okay. If it's two minutes out of the entire show, he just talk like this. Oh, yeah, still okay lah. Sure. All fine, right. Right. But okay. So the big announcement, uh, and I know you're a big fan, and a lot of people are excited. CM Punk returns to AEW, making his big return. Of course, in the United Center in Chicago, his hometown, for mm-hmm. AEW Collision. What What's your thoughts on the way this was announced? Um, oh, I don't know, man. Like, I think the reason they didn't make it a surprise mm-hmm. is that ticket sales are very bad. Very, very bad, right? Mm-hmm. So they're like, yes, hey, so we, we need to, you know, pull out our biggest gun. And especially in Chicago, CM Punk is your big gun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. I, yeah, I think it's a combination of that. Like, you know, they're trying to get some buzz going forward. But also, I feel like maybe they're trying to get an early gauge of what the reaction, the reception of CM Punk's return is going to be like, right? Sure, sure. I mean, here's the thing, right? Like, is it really any surprise that mm-hmm. he is going to start drawing the money? And some people are saying, Edison is saying, he feels like Punk is going to get the booze. Not in Chicago. Definitely not in Chicago. He's, okay. See, here's the thing, right? Yeah. He could have, like with his injury and everything, like obviously he first got injured before the whole, uh, was it all in or all out? That, that uh, all media in. Scrum. All in media yes. scrum, right? Sorry, all out. Media scrum, sorry. All out, right. I mean, if the EVPs weren't such children about it, they could have made it so much bigger. They could have worked this into an angle and mm-hmm. made money. But yeah. they are just way too... <sighs> just, okay, the reason that the live crowd reaction was so meh, it's because mm-hmm. most of the people who watch AEW now are the diehards. They are the Young Buck fans, right? Mm-hmm. And there's, like we've talked about, there's only a cap to that number already. CM Punk was bringing everybody else in. And so now, if your crowd is only the diehards, of course they're going to hate CM Punk, right? So the yeah. Young Bucks has, have successfully poisoned the well. Made fans turn on CM Punk. Yeah, one thing a lot of people don't realize as well, they had that dynamite in San Francisco, apparently, which is like California, mm. which is the West Coast, which is Punk, uh, which is Young Bucks country, right? Because that's where PWG have most of their shows. So I I wasn't surprised there was a mixed reception, but I'm actually surprised that there was actually cheers in that arena for CM Punk. I mean, at the end of the day, CM Punk is still a huge draw. Even within Young Bucks fans, there are going to be CM Punk fans. You know what I mean? So I'm not surprised I, yeah. at that. But the bigger question I feel like is, okay, you know, he's back. He's going to pop a rating, I'm sure. They're doing it to pop a rating. This is the debut episode. We all yes. remember the debut episode of Rampage. CM Punk comes in. Oh, huge ratings. And <laughs> then from then on downhill slide so my question to you is yes you bring back CM Punk hopefully with some sort of angle for him but Mm -hmm. is it going to do much in the long term yeah I'm almost feel like it's inevitable like they can't do anything else but to turn him heel Um, because I feel like um, there's no other way to justify why he's been absent like he can't just go back and suddenly end up playing the baby face that nothing happened I mean if yeah. He can always say that he was injured after the match and he, they technically don't need to reference the backs, but they will because that's their style, right? They're like, oh, all the fans are smart. But yeah. then again, to a lot of people, he was the good guy in that whole situation. And let's face it, honestly, okay, 
when you talk about a feud between the Young Bucks and CM Punk, let's say the Young Bucks finally like, okay, let's work together, right? Even mm-hmm. if that does happen, like, oh, this is going to be so money drawing. Unless they tell that story to the mainstream audience, people are not going to know. This is just going to be one of those, oh, you know, I know sort of a feuds. We'll know, but nobody else will know. Yeah, I feel like Pound being a great orator, storyteller that he is, right? Yeah. He can easily craft the conflict yes. straight away, right? Yes. Um, I almost want him to do a Chris Jericho 2012. I don't know whether you remember when he returned that year. Yeah, yeah. He had this very cryptic, it's the end of the world as you know it, you know, oh, super cryptic. Right, and right. then when he when he returned to the ring, right, of course he got cheered because it was the first time in like two years that he returned. But then after he go rara the crowd, go one round around the ring and then as he was about to pick up the mic, right, mm. he stepped into the camera, he dropped the mic and he walked away without a single word. Mm. So he he turned his back la, on the fans and whatever. Now, okay, here's the thing, yeah. right? And if you think about it, it takes two to tango. Look, yeah. if CM Punk turns heel, it, it doesn't matter what alignment he is. We know that he can talk, he can put, mm-hmm. put seats in butts. It's seats in butts. Butts in seats. <laughs> butts in yeah, seats, bro. <laughs> butts in seats, yeah. We know he can get the reaction, right? Yeah. Do you think his opposition can or not? Do you think the Young Bucks, anybody will <sighs> see them as baby faces? I tell you, uh, if Punk can make the elite, right, beloved baby face, I think he's the best in the world, really, at what he exactly. does. <laughs> exactly. And he's not going to want to anyway, right? For yeah. all intents and purposes, like through the dirt sheets and whatnot, it seems like he wants to work with Jay White. Thank goodness. At least mm. you, you put Jay White somewhere where he is featured prominently uh, instead of, you know, in a battle royale with Orange Cassidy and losing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's also a timing thing as well. Of course, Forbidden Door coming up. Yeah. It makes sense that, you know, Punk's first few is going to be like a New Japan-related opponent. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if he's going to be the headliner of this new Collision show, right, I feel like he will set a lot of the direction of what is going to happen for this show. But again, I do not know whether as a... As a heel, like, is he going to be like a Roman Reigns type of like all conquering heel? I run this show. How is it going to work? I'm not too sure. I don't think it works for him because physically he can't impose himself, you know, in mm. that way. He has to be a cerebral heel. He, he, yeah. He has to be the cerebral assassin. He has to play the game. Yeah, yes. You know. <laughs> I almost feel like, like he should get himself a bodyguard. He should mm. get himself, get this. A Hobbs. powerhouse Hobbs. Yes. Oh, bro, bro, we are on the yeah. same line. Oh, same, God. same. Get, yeah, get yeah. Hobbs away from this shithole that is the... the what, what is it? Nightmare Factory? The QT Marshall and his group? The factory. QTV. QTV. QTV nonsense. Get him away. Put him with somebody like a CM Punk who can teach him a thing or two on how to work. And holy shit. Imagine... It, it just give Hobbs to CM Punk for a few months. The amount of good that could do for someone like a Hobbs. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be difficult because I think both of us are leaning towards turning punk, kind of a tweener or a heel, right? But how do you book a baby face punk return? I think he just needs to return. Honestly, in Chicago, he's, he mm. just needs to return. And I think also CM Punk is the sort of guy that is beyond heel or face at this point. Mm. You know, He can come out and be a little bit more acidic with his comments, but people yeah. will still cheer him. People will yeah. either like him or hate him. He, um, he's going to be one of those guys. Like, like a John Cena, he'll divide the crowd. And depending on who he's working against, he'll lean more towards one side or the other and be very real, blah, blah, blah. Typical punk things. You know what? Honestly, the best thing for business is to just have him away from the elite and let the two shows just be separate shows booked by mm. separate people. Uh, the rumor I read was that Collision is going to be booked by like CM Punk and Brian Danielson and less Tony Khan. So, I mean, Collision could be the A show. Yeah, I mean, of course, there's also the the talk about A Steel being mm. a huge part of his storylines going forward and also a bit of uh, the show in Collision as well. So if they, for example, uh, they really separate the shows based on philosophy, mm-hmm. wrestling philosophy, like, okay, AEW Dynamite is going to be the indie style, like the elite style, but it's going to be like party wrestling and they're going to go all out in that area. And then if... Collision is like the old school wrestling stuff because I heard as well one of the issues that Cody Rhodes had was he wanted to make AEW like old school southern wrestling right, territory right, wrestling right. and of course um, you know Punk uh, sorry the the Bucks had a very different vision they wanted it to be like West Coast California party style wrestling right PWG I- I- indie shit yeah so, which is what so, they've been doing 
So I think the best way to find out which really works is to let them compete with each other and see who really can uh, have the bigger audience. I know it might divide the AEW audience, but I also feel like it, they will know where they want to go for good shows. Like last time, we, we watched SmackDown for the great wrestling, we watched Raw for the drama, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I wonder though, like, are the... How does that work? Let's say, okay, Dynamite and Collision are booked differently, booked by different people. So do you mm-hmm. have separate rosters or do you have um, the same people floating back and forth? But it's ve- going to be very weird if one day Daniel Bri- or Brian Danielson is booked one way and then another day Brian Danielson is booked a different way. You know what I mean? I feel like maybe they can do a floating champion system okay. where only the champions get to go on both shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, that will make a lot of sense. Um and I think AEW can do it better than WWE because they don't have... I know they have a lot of titles, but they don't have as many titles as WWE. <laughs> Wait, what are you talking about? They have every single title. Oh this my God, don't count... What are you talking about? Don't count Ring of Honor, don't count Triblia, or please, it's stress, bro. <laughs> yeah, right? So, I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, right? Honestly, it is a situation where we need to wait and see what they can mm. do. You know, as much as we want to say, oh, CM Punk is going to be the savior of AEW, he's only one man. Right. Yeah. Um. You're not gonna have him come out and do what 45 minute promos and matches every single week. Cannot. People get sick of him. So no. It it needs to be a thing of the culture of that show. So yeah. Uh, the idea of <laughs> who's booking Rampage and nobody, bro. Nobody. <laughs> bro, Rampage is like uh chapalang, bro. Chapalang, bro. R- Rampage is WWE superstars. It's uh main event. Nobody watches that shit anymore, right? Pro- so, probably QT Marshall, uh. Yeah. QT Marshall yeah. Is it. So it, it really boils down to what kind of work culture you have within the two shows, like and the booking and stuff like that. So it's gonna be very interesting to see. I just hope that yes, if you're gonna have separate booking committees, then you really need separate rosters because yep. yeah like, like I said you're gonna have you know Miro show up on Collision with a solid storyline and then next week he shows up on Dynamite and plays video games like huh mm. it's not gonna work you know <laughs> yeah okay one thing I trust about Pong right even though yes he has his issues on his own right but he has never been shy about putting people over and elevating other talents right well as long as they deserve it they're hard working and they can work in the ring we know that if he don't like he doesn't like somebody, uh, he will be very obvious about it, man. Yeah, but I mean, that's fair. Well, I mean, you don't want to put over an asshole, right? But but let's look at his track record from AEW, right? Sure. Even every single opponent he's fought with has been elevated. You look at Darby Allen, was elevated after his program. Eddie Kingston was the hottest he's ever been after CM Punk. And then Chris Jericho, fuck it up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, and then look at everything. Remember, he, he talked about Sand Hook, Starks. Yeah. Hobbs, like all of these people, just by being mentioned around him, uh, got put over. Even yeah. Britt Baker got put over. So I don't doubt his track record of like, okay, if all these people in this roster of collision is under his kind of leadership, they will definitely be elevated. But it's more of what they do with them after the fact. But yes, back to my point earlier. If and it seems like all signs point towards them having the same roster. If that is the yep. case, then you're going to have some really weird continuity, like two different universes, you know? Um, yeah. Because at the end of the day, right? So you have... It's like, I, I don't envy Tony Khan. So at this point, he's probably going to have two sides, one devil, one uh, god whispering into his ear. You know, that whole scenario yeah. where it's like, no, no, you should get them to do this, get them to do that, you know? And then you have Brian Danielson, who's like a nice guy who will acquiesce to anybody and everybody, right? Yeah. So I think that is an issue. I need, I think Tony Khan needs to be a boss. He needs to be a leader here and not everybody's friend. And that yeah. is the main issue here. The second he nuts up, and starts telling people off or, you know, being objective about certain things, that's when we can see growth in AEW. Mm-hmm. CM Punk is not going to be able to do it all on his own. Correct. I, I do have a very interesting, like, DM exchange with one of our listeners, uh, Jason from Brunei, right? I'm not mm. sure if he's in this chat, but he's very against, like, CM Punk returning. He was saying, like, um, well, really, uh, CM Punk has gotten Tony Khan by the ball sack, man. What's going to happen if uh, CM Punk gets injured again or he throws another tantrum and he leaves? How, <sighs> how are they going to survive, right? I mean, that is a very fair statement and sure. question to ask. Like, say... CM Punk, for some reason, he's suddenly not, not happy with Sammy Guevara. Mm. You know what I mean? And then he's like, ah, oh, fuck this guy. And then he, he walks away. Like, AEW needs to prepare for that possibility because it seems like a legitimate risk, right? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Would you rather have a CM Punk or an Elite? Let me give you an example. 
CM Punk, in the short amount of time that he was there, he elevated mm-hmm. how many people? How many people yeah. have the Young Bucks elevated? That's all the proof you need that, in my view, I would rather have a CM Punk for six months than Elite for three years. Yeah, okay. Young Bucks has definitely devalued FTR. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have devalued... I I think Lucha Bros also wasn't elevated thanks to nope. them. Nope. Uh, yeah, not, nothing else. <laughs> right. Be- yeah, because they are in the business of putting on indie sports shows where they come out, make themselves look good, do all these flippity, 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 and that's it. They have no idea how to build for the future. And look, if you... Love them, you love the sports, that's fine. Very athletic, very entertaining for some people, right? But Mm -hmm. it is, you you can't argue that they've made nobody. Look at the state Uh of AEW right now. Literally no main event stars. The the last pay-per-view is a drastic indictment of that very fact. No tech teams were made thanks to Young Bucks as well. Because even though they wanted to create the best tech team division over there, right? They wanted to create the best tag team division. They were not over. They held down FTR. And then they're like, all right, you know what? We're going to drop these titles and make the trios titles. And guess what? The trio titles? Nothing. nothing useless. Nothing. Garbage. House like, of Black. Nothing yeah, doing as well. Exactly. So, really, <laughs> it is not the hate for the Bucks, bro. Don't get me. I, I know it sounds like I hate them and I do not enjoy their style. But, but, hear me out. Some people need to be... Um, they, some people are talent and terrible leaders. They are good at what they do, but they are terrible leaders. I feel mm-hmm. like the Bucks are exactly that. Tony Khan needs to stop being their friend and be their boss. Tell them what to do. Okay, you know what? I have a great football reference for this, man. Sure. Bro, I think Young Bucks, right, is like the Frank Lampard of wrestling, bro. <laughs> okay. okay. Please explain. I will explain so, so you can appreciate because you are a previous Chelsea fan, right, Mr. Young? That's correct, yes. Okay, so of course everyone agrees Frank Lampard is one of the best midfielders in the world when he was in his prime, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he has since gone on to management and he has managed Chelsea twice and he sucks balls, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he sucks balls, bro. And the first time he cannot fire it after like less than a year or a year and a half. And then this recent one, he came back as an interim. He lost majority of his uh, matches and basically he just made his reputation even worse. But then like all the Chelsea fans like very like heart pain, like, heart pain to criticize him because like that's our hero, bro. That's yeah. like our <laughs> favorite player. So yeah, I get it. He's like the, so the young boss is like the Frank Lampard of wrestling, bro. Sure, I, I would have never, you know, connected the two, but I guess that makes sense, right? I mean, <sighs> the problem, like I said, you know, uh, doesn't matter whether I like or don't like the Young Bucks. It's not that. The problem is not that. The main problem is Tony Khan. And if yep. he just, you know, it was like, okay, you know what, guys? We've had enough fun for the three years, but I need to think about this as a business and mm. do this properly as a promoter. You know, I, I don't even think splitting the rosters is a good thing because at some point, people are going to be like not happy. Say, hey, look, they're doing so well over at Collision or Dynamite is getting more airtime because they are on a better spot because it's a weekday. This is how you build resentment in any sort of organization, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you put down one to bring up the other, right? Uh, I have this very interesting uh, question then. Like, would you put Kenny Omega in the same spot as the Young Bucks? Because you said the Young Bucks haven't put over or pushed any sort of talent. Mm. But as Kenny Omega as a single uh, wrestler on his own, do you yeah. think he can put over talent? I've already... Well, oh, as in Kenny Omega himself putting over talent? No. I think he needs a good booker. He's obviously very talented, okay. but he needs a good booker or to work with someone like CM Punk. Honestly, if you are able to take Kenny Omega and put him over to Collision to work programs with CM Punk and Brian Danielson, I think that would do wonders for him. You know, mm. instead of always being stuck with his friends. And, you know, we are all guilty of this. You know, even though we know something is better for us, uh, yeah, we just want to be with our friends and do the same mm. thing we've done for, you know, how many years, right? It's comfort zone. And I feel like the elite, that group, they've all sort of settled into this comfort zone. I can guarantee you, Starks and uh, Hobbs, all these guys that wanted to listen, wanted to improve, wanted to grow, mm-hmm. they confirmed. They are like, hey, hey, please, please send me over to Collision. Please let me mm. go over there. Let me give you an example of somebody, right? Because he chose to be with his friends, right? Has regressed completely, bro. Okay, is this is this a football analogy again? No, 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 it's not. <laughs> no, it's lit, it's a wrestler. This time, okay. it's gonna stick okay. to a wrestler. Tell me, 
Your favorite NXT champion, bro. Your former NXT guy. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on, let's be Adam, honest. Adam Cole, baby. Oh my god. Okay, you all know I love Adam Cole. Undisputed era, black and gold yeah. era, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. This is a classic case. When he was in NXT, the pressure was on. You know, Triple mm. H. Obviously, mm. Triple H likes him, but also they put the pressure on him to perform, look good, and yeah, perform, of and course. Stuff like that. And now, now that he's with his friends, I don't know if he's sick or anything because from everything I've read, he's a very nice guy, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he, he, he looks like, bro, he, you look like you could take him out. You look like hey, bro. Take him out. Come on, bro. What you underestimate, bro? Of course I can. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but, but you know, like, when, when, oh, that match with Chris Jericho, I just, I, I try to erase it from my mind because these are two of my favorites and they're like, Two sloths in there. <laughs> okay, like, Chris Jericho versus Adam Cole at any other year. Maybe like 2018. Yeah. Like when Chris Jericho just went to Japan and like yeah. Adam Cole was at the top of NXT, I think it would have been an awesome match. Correct. For sure. But 2023 version of both of them, a bit like, ayo, like a bit poor thing la, to see that match, to be honest. Bro, the chat is popping off with uh, puns. It's hilarious. More like the Doom. More like Doom. Uh, undisputed Era. <laughs> Not Undisputed I... Error. Wow, you guys are so smart, man. Respect. Oh, my God. Uh, and, and that's why, by the way, if you're listening to the podcast, you should join us on the live stream as well. It's always a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, but, sure. yes. So, like, there is something to be said, lah, bro. I think okay. we can all... As much as we love certain wrestlers, they're great people, sometimes they need to be... The pressure needs to be put on them to go and work out, to look good. Because at the end yeah. of the day, it's a visual art as well. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, sorry. But what would you say to people who say like, oh, you know, like uh, Chris Candido was a small wrestler, but like why you never make fun of uh, him? Or why do you why, why people never make fun of Spike Dudley but make fun of Adam Cole for being skinny? You know what I mean? What because, would you say to those people? Because Spike Dudley was never positioned in the WWF anyway. He was never positioned as somebody who could have competitive matches with Kane. Like mm. Spike Dudley was literally there to get tossed around. You know, mm. As he should be, because this is a performance of a fight. If you try to make it completely unbelievable, this goes back to my whole Riho issue. There's never, mm. I never had any problem with Riho when she was facing Alexis Lee here in, you know, in Singapore, when she's going up against people of her size. But when mm. she's beating and actually handling Nyla Rose or Jamie Hater, like, what are you trying? What, what do you do? Like, mm. Does she have superpowers? I, I yeah. think mean she's an alien. Like what? Come on, man. Yeah, the problem with uh, someone like Adam Cole, Adam Cole, his face, mm. his hair, everything about him from the top, uh, from the head on top, right? Mm. It's like, okay, main eventer because he got looks, he got the charisma, his verbal skills. But when you like zoom out and show his entire body, like, hey, why so small? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and here's the thing, right? Like you look at Shawn Michaels, he's a small guy as well, skinny, but at least he looks athletic. You know? Yeah. Yeah, when I was young, right, I never thought Macho Man was small. I never thought Chris Jericho was small, even though he was, like, facing the rock. Or I never thought he was, like, short. Yeah, they, because they had, like, you know, a, they, they had, like, Physique. tone and, yeah, they were ripped and stuff like that. Like, when you, for example, you run into someone like uh, uh, Chris Benoit, like, dude is short, but he's thick. Right, and he yeah. know that he works out, and obviously, you know, he, he could tear you limb from limb, lah. But like now, when you look at Adam Cole, he like I hate saying he, this because I know a lot of us here are gamers. I'm a gamer as well. He looks like your stereotypical gamer <laughs> that never sees the sun. Even even Ray Mysterio, right? Yeah, we all understand he's a little man, but he's always in shape. You know, yes. athletic, yes. athletic. Ah. I mean, okay, uh, to be honest, that one point when he was getting the major push, he like, woo, all of a sudden he that quite big size, oh, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, he, but, he got this, that steroids in the body, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, Mexican supplements. Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, now he still looks great. He's in shape. Adam Cole is not in shape. And yeah, it's not about body shaming and all that kind of stuff. This is a performance art. If you look <laughs> like crap and move like crap, this just all looks... Like a joke. Yeah. Stovakin asks us a legit question. What about Orange Cassidy? Will you consider Orange Cassidy's physique like not there as well? Um, he's still lean. At least he's still lean. But I mean, that's the other thing. Like Orange Cassidy also, right? Like when you put him up against a powerhouse, powerhouse Hobbs, honestly, yeah. 
don't expect you you don't have him beat Hobbs. He needs to be smart, he needs to be quick. Mm. How basically how Rey Mysterio won his matches lah. Yeah. Even like someone like Darby Allen, right? I think that lean physique works for him because yeah. he relies on being an underdog. He relies on being yeah. quick and, and like doing all this crazy shit, right? Yeah, and, and that's the is he's got the Jeff Hardy vibe where he's like you don't know what he's gonna do. He might like do something crazy, skateboard his you know, face into a wall, whatever lah. Yeah, like I can honestly can believably feel that W. Allen can go toe-to-toe with Gunther and be smart about it. Yep. And he can actually have a believable match. But for Adam Cole, I feel it's the, the way he wrestles. Mm. He wants to come across like a main eventer when he wrestles. Correct. But he, he can't pull it off because of his current physique. What, what, it's that indie mindset. Like, oh, everyone is equal opportunity. Like, no, not really. And there's more of a story to be told. You're really taking people out of the reality of trying. Like, you know, like, yeah. yeah I hate that mentality of, oh, everyone knows it's a work anyway, so let's just be as outrageous as possible. No, you still have to keep it within the realm of possibility. If not, then yeah, like, then okay lah, then I can step into the ring and, you know, beat the statement. Like, no, that, look at the no, difference no, no, no. in size, right? You know? Yeah, I mean? don't even try. No, no, like, um, even, let me admit something to you, bro. Like, I know, you know, everyone knows I'm a big CM Punk fan, yeah. but to be really honest, mm. I don't really like his GTS as his finisher. No, you're because right. you're, mm. yeah, because I feel like he is not known for his power moves. Yeah, and to lift someone over his shoulders is technically should be reserved for a power wrestler, right? Exactly. And and yeah, because I how can he do it to somebody like uh I don't know like a big show if he does it to Wardlow or Power Hops? I really feel it's really unbelievable. Correct. I mean, we've talked about it before. The best moves are those that suit you and also you can pull off at any given time. That's why the RKO is, to me, like, still the best move of all time. You can pull it off on anybody, everybody from any angle. Yes, agree, agree. Even, um, like, you know, Switchy Music, when it was just Shawn Michaels doing it, was an <laughs> ultimate awesome finisher, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Anaconda Vice for Life, says Rishi. I mean, you know, I do love me my submission finishers, but... It doesn't have that shock value, you know? Like, mm. that's the thing about, like, a stunner. Like, boom, bam, and it's over. Or rock bottom, boom, it's over, right? Yeah, like, I love it as well. It's like, it works for certain people. Lah. Yeah. Okay, let's put a bow on this CM Punk discussion. Like, can, yep. I also want to ask the chat about this as well. Overall, do you think CM Punk returning is good for business? Like, bottom line. That's yeah, what okay. I want to know. Is it good for business? Good or not? Just, just throw that into the chat. You know, yeah, let us know. Let us, let, let let us see know. which way the wind blows here. I I will say it's good for business, but only if Tony Khan wakes up his idea. Because if Tony Khan runs the same thing, I mean, does the same thing that he's always done, right? I can tell you, there's going to be another press conference where there's going to be another meltdown and it's going to happen again. Yeah. Let, 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 let's ask this question as well. Like, Do you think, right, when he returns, mm. will the CM Punk eventually stand in the ring, toe-to-toe with the elite or not? Will they have that confrontation or not? Do you, you think talk, so? If you talk about elite, right, I say maybe Kenny Omega, but not the mm-hmm. Young Bucks. I don't think mm-hmm. CM Punk would even trust the Young Bucks. And he's at mm-hmm. that point in his life where he doesn't need to take that sort of risk because, mm-hmm. you know, so not with the Bucks, certainly not with Hangman Page. Ugh. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. After this whole thing with Hangman, right, I can never look at Hangman the same. I would rather you turn him heel at this point because, like, mm. you know? Yeah. That, that hangman that all of us rooted for to become the world champion feels like a different person than we, than the hangman right now. Because that, that guy we all wanted to support yeah. and make him the top guy. Yeah, now yeah. we... It's like we found out that this guy is actually a bit of a sniveling bitch, right? And it's like, ooh, I, I don't support him anymore. Yeah, yeah it's, a bit tough, like, it's a bit tough. So I tell you, like the number of people that like genuinely you want to support, it ever gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Um... Yeah, and maybe, I don't know whether CM Punk being there, I think it's supposed, it's, it's like that chemical reaction, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. last time they all kumbaya, so happy, happy, but you know there's always going to be a ceiling to it. But then mm. when you bring in competition or you bring in somebody like CM Punk who's going to like shock the system, right? It's no <laughs> pun intended, right? Like, you will feel like, okay, this is where you step up because now you have the one of the best yep. there trying to show up everyone. Everyone has to step up. Right? That's the yep. whole point of being in a competitive environment, right? And when someone like that steps up, 
you are bound to step on toes because people are going to be like, oh, but, uh, and then jealousy comes into play straight up. You know, some people just don't like some people, right? And yeah. that's exactly what has happened already. So will it yeah. happen again? Who knows? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. It's going to be interesting times, but not because I want to watch Dynamite. It's because I want to hear the backstage news. Oh uh, yeah, so uh, so who says a very good point and so a counter point. CM Punk already he do Larry also like chia like like so yeah. What do you think about CM Punk? He's he's an older guy. He's getting injured a lot. Bro, he, what what's the point of him being dead? Eh? He he can influence the culture. That's the big one, right? Work mm. with younger talents like your FTR. You know, contemporaries like. Brian Danielson have one of those have matches once a month. He doesn't have to have matches every single week. That's the thing, right? Like mm. there's this assumption that what he's gonna come back and wrestle every week. No lah. You know, like remember the MJF uh, CM Punk feud? Yeah. What like they yeah. barely touched each other and it built to a boiling point, right? And yeah, yeah. That's the sort of smart booking and smart uh, angles that he can bring to the table. You know, so um, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter that he's old. Yeah, he's not going to be performing at the level he once was. But the whole idea is to put over young talent. And that's what I want to see. And he has done more to do that. Just to go back to that point, because I can't stress this enough. He has done more to elevate talent than the Young Bucks have done so in three years. Yeah, yeah. like even to be honest, he has done more to elevate talent than anyone in the company. Like say, say for Cody Rhodes. I mean, Cody Rhodes did yeah. it. But I feel like it was to his detriment. Like, yeah. Cody Rhodes didn't know how to keep himself over while putting other people over, which he needed to learn, la, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, and we see like that Cody is the type of guy that needs a platform like the WWE who can push him to that, you know, mega star status. But um, yeah. obviously, a lot of people are going to watch Collision to see what CM Punk says. But mm-hmm. it's only one episode. You know, it, it really is. The follow-up is just as important, if not more important, than this one episode of Collision. Yeah, like, um, I think at the end of the day, right, whether there's going to be multiple ways that AW can play in, right? If you bring him back as a baby face, bring him back as a heel. Oh my God, I even had this one thought. What if they bring him to face MJF and everyone thought he's, they're going to renew the rivalry instead? Two man power trip, bro. Oh, Ooh. then they need uh, another title. What title would they use? No, like, I, I would feel like, um, you know, CM Punk and MJF together as like these twin terrors, uh, like terrorizing everyone. I think it would be funny because I think MJF is like, no, CM Punk is like, you know what? I don't think you're right. You know, I'm done playing nice. And then he becomes a bad guy with MJF. I think that would be dope. Uh, but yeah, if AEW plays this right, they can have an already they can have a really great summer to like bounce back from like this past year like, of like mediocrity. Let's be honest, right? Yeah, and then heading into Wembley as well, that could be big, you know. Um, to be honest, okay, at this point though, what is your hype level for Forbidden Door? Because okay, I I have the same problem as I did last year and whatever the previous Forbidden Doors, right? Is that mm-hmm. I don't know enough about New Japan to salivate over some of these matches like Mm -hmm. you know i mean like i saw on social media brian danielson already kind of has an opponent yes yes he has challenged okada actually Mm. to a match so yeah i i know them by name obviously but you know i'm like "Eh, is there a history there i hope they start telling these stories because if not then it's going to be the same thing you are just appealing to this crowd that knows and everyone else don't care yeah, I mean, okay, Brian Danielson and Okada, of course, it's going to be a great match. Yeah. It's going to be a banger match, right? And of course, I watched the promo. Um, I really like the line that Brian said, like, you know, you call yourself the rainmaker, but when you're fighting with me, you're in the fucking desert. Mm. There ain't going to be any rain. I mean, like, okay, they, they can tell their stories. I appreciate that. But, right, you know what's the biggest thing that they need to get? What? They, they need to get MJF on the card. Because uh. MJF, if you realize, every single press club he's been saying he hates New Japan, right? Right. He said, like, oh, New Japan sucks. I ain't gonna work with any of these, like, schmucks. I hate New Japan. Mm. What if, right, you put CM, uh, oh, sorry, MJF against, like, the ace of New Japan, somebody like Tanahashi. You mm. know what I mean? I think it'd be super funny because, like, yeah, it's, it's literally, like, he would be the de facto villain and all the New Japan fans would be like, oh my god, you don't touch our hero, don't touch our Tanahashi. But he can call him off for being an old guy. So I think if they do this right, yep. then they can create intrigue for both AEW fans and New Japan fans. Well, but again, it, depends on the, the team. Lah. 
it'll be an interesting time because when Forbidden Door happens, it's also like around that same week of AEW Fight Forever, the video game comes out. Mm. So it's like, okay, there's a lot of AEW hype leading into the last week of June, which is also my birthday month and birthday Ooh. week, by the way. Yeah, so are you going to spend your birthday week watching Forbidden Door and playing Fight Forever? Being an AEW mark? <laughs> we'll definitely play AEW Fight Forever just to check it out and see. I mean, a video game is a video game. Maybe, you know, they've uh, tapped on something here, right? Like, we've yeah. heard that they are going more for the new No Mercy or the w, uh, WCW, you know, those old school games. So I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I enjoyed those games tremendously as well. Okay. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. La. We'll have to wait and see how those pan out. Yeah, we will also like, you know, definitely do some sort of review or like mm-hmm. play through or some exclusive. You never know, Mr. Young. We shall see what happens, right? Uh, yes, going to be interesting times. But yeah, let's uh, put a bow on AEW and the whole CM Punk situation. And uh, I'm I'm excited. Lah. I'm excited for the next blowout, the next <laughs> press scrum, not going to lie. Bro, we are here with the popcorn all for the drama. Just ready, bro. Yes, right? absolutely. Uh, okay, let's talk a bit about Roman Reigns at this point. Let's pivot, you know, and uh, this past SmackDown, he got that new title. First of all, okay, Chad, do you like the look of the new title? Uh, I don't know who posted this, but this was damn funny. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. You know what I'm talking about, right? Which one? You know, Raw used to have that red color WWE belt. Red belt with hey. W, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then SmackDown has the blue universal title with the W in the middle. And then now this one is black and gold with the W in front. It's like, eh, excuse me, huh? NXT black <laughs> and gold? <laughs> so, the, so this is the new NXT championship, everyone. <laughs> uh, I mean, also, I mean, Papa H is in charge, so it kind of makes sense, right? But uh, what do you think of the title? Uh... I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm slightly disappointed, but I'm not surprised. I mean, like, come on, they're not gonna change that yeah. huge SW <laughs> on the belt. Or that's like that's like free marketing and branding yeah. for them. It makes okay. sense. Okay, I I'm a bit of two minds about it, right? Mm. Because of the fact that visually it's quite cool to have Roman Reigns come out holding two belts. You know what I mean? It mm. makes him look more grand. Like have you seen these boxes? They come out with like WBA, ABC, EFG, HIJ, all the different belts. <laughs> it looks cool. Like, wow, this fella won belts in so many divisions and so many companies, right? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it makes him look cool. Now, I assume he's just going to come out with that one big black and gold belt. So mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. not quite as cool. Like, you know, and, and he used to come out with Paul Heyman holding one belt and he hold one belt. Like, wow, it, it looks like a big deal. Yeah, the presentation helps a lot, yeah. Mm. So I, I, I'm I, not too sure about it. Hey, who knows? Huh? Maybe he will come out with three belts. Oh Please. my God, no, 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 no. Imagine come on. He, he keeps the other two. Maybe give one to Solo and then he carries the main one. <laughs> no, then I think that's a bit of an overkill. Like. You got one guy, <laughs> Seth Rollins, with one title and then this Roman Reigns on the other show with three titles. Come on, that, that's yeah. a bit too much. I'm, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm actually quite like hesitant about that. Like, you know, I'm, I would rather him hold two belts and make him look cool. But I get it. I understand. Like, also at some point, you know, you, you can't have too many belts floating around already. Like, it gets a bit absurd. Yeah, but like in terms of the look of the title, right? Like, mm. I guess my hopes was a bit high because the World Heavyweight Championship, they brought, literally brought back the design of the old gold belt and like modernized it a bit. Yeah. So a part of me wish like they brought back like the Wind Eagle design or like, yeah. you know, a bit of the old Attitude Era Championship and then like, yeah, they can have their debut fine, but they don't have to be so damn big. Like, can be just freaking at the top or at the bottom. But then like when they brought back the W, then I was like, ah, oh, it's just another color. Fuck. La. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. But, it's just yellow color. Yeah. Yeah, but again, right, I don't, I, I don't really hate the design because mm-hmm. we got that title right out of the spinner belt. And then yeah. ever since then, it's more, more or less the same design, right? Mm. That belt is clean. It's smooth. And like I feel like if you wear it at a Super Bowl or like you bring it out for like some uh, you know talk show, people will like straight away recognize, oh, da, WWE. Yeah, that's the WWE belt, right? right? Yeah. Um, it, it makes sense from a business perspective. Mm. It's just that like, I just wish that the knowing Triple H who loves his history, who would appreciate the Wing Eagle title, and you, of course, will appreciate the Wing Eagle title. Imagine if they recreated it in some form or another. That would be so dope. Um, from what I understand, the current Seth Rollins one 
is sort of like a combination between the, the because there are eagles in that you know big uh, gold belt design with the W in the middle as well. So uh, that honestly, the Seth Rollins one is still taking me a bit of time to get used to because the W in the middle seems very obtrusive. It's like you have it's like the gold big gold belt, but you go and dig one hole in the middle, put one W inside. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, like I said, you're right. It takes a bit of getting used to, but like in some angles, right, when the light shines on it, it, <laughs> it looks really dope. Uh, uh, sure. But and, I'm cl- I'm clutching at straws, lah, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. no, no. Okay, now you compare the two titles, right? The world title. Hey, wait, so is um, Roman's title still called the undisputed title? Apparently, it's called, still called the undisputed WWE Universal title. Okay. So Okay, so and the other one is the world heavyweight title, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, just looking at the two, I actually like the... Roman Reigns one because like you said it's cleaner I have to get used to the colour but it's at least you know it's cleaner it's the border with the W inside and the gold colour inside right versus yeah. Seth like I said it's the old gold belt but with a giant hole in the middle yeah and I think after you get used to the yellow or I guess it's the gold right oh, gold. when it shines and you know how WWE likes to play with the lights and all that mm-hmm. I think it will look really really impressive yeah, uh, yeah but the problem with that is that yeah la, you have to make a compromise like if you want the historical like old school very ornate design then you can go and look at the World Heavyweight Championship yeah. if you are like the modern okay this is where I bring all the mainstream Saturday Night Live yeah, yeah. Super Bowl then use that WWE title okay lah fine I can compromise lah well and also we all know lah huh? Roman Reigns is the Hollywood superstar potential guy he's the one who's going to be doing all the talk shows yes Seth will do some but at the end of the day Seth is more of the workhorse champion and they portrayed him as such like he's going to defend the title every single week sort of a deal right where Roman's is like <laughs> once in a while show up sort of a champion so yeah. I get it I guess I get it not gonna lie, right? I, I actually like every single champion that is in WWE those are the singles titles right now. Like you look you have Roman Reigns on SmackDown, you have uh Austin Theory on the undercard uh yeah. with the US title. And over on Raw you got freaking Seth Rollins and Gunther. Those are like pretty good title holders per se. And then you have the tag team champions, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. But bro, these are the men's titles. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, what about the women's titles? Okay, here's the thing, right? They still haven't addressed the issue of uh, Rhea and Asuka. Oh my it. god, yes, yeah. They're still on opposite shows, right? Yeah, so like, I don't understand why they haven't addressed this yet. Yeah, because right now Asuka's Raw title mm. is on SmackDown yeah. and Rhea Ripley is a SmackDown champion but she's on Raw. Mm. Uh, is it time so that Okay, to avoid this sort of like, you know, Raw and SmackDown Women's Champion, have one Women's Championship and have one, I don't know, Divas Championship or, okay, not Diva, I guess. Uh, the Mummy Championship? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, I, I agree with you. I think they should change the names. They yeah. shouldn't call it by their show. They should change the color so it's a bit more general. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't even mind, right? Like, since Rhea's one is like with Raw and like Seth is the World Heavyweight title, mm. why not call it the World Women's Heavyweight title? I think they would be pretty dope. And then what? The other one is the Undisputed uh, WWE. Universal, WWE, like, wow. A bit. Not, okay, not, not, not need to do all the Universal part. Like, maybe just the WWE Women's Championship, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Div Royalty says Io and Asuka arguing in Japanese is awesome. Yeah, they re- tried to re- recreate uh, a segment they had previously, if you remember. Yeah, I, I saw somebody subtitle it. It's quite funny. Yeah, it's yeah, quite, quite funny. really quite funny. So, <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, Io versus Asuka for that title. At least Io is getting a bit of a shine. Honestly, Io versus Asuka is actually a dream match in a lot of scenarios. So, I wouldn't mind that for the SmackDown title. Run. But who's going to step up to Mami? That's the question. Uh, well... You got to build them up slowly, one by one. You had Selena Vega. She had a bit of a shot. You know, um, yeah, mm-hmm. really who? Bianca? Now that Bianca's freed up of her title? Yeah, well, we shall see. We shall see. I mean, we don't want to dive too much into Raw and SmackDown because I feel like the, the funny thing about Raw and like WWE, WWE is fun and like you, you really love the storylines going to the shows. But I feel like the weekly episodes are skippable, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean... Uh, yeah. Yeah, like a lot of people just watch the YouTube highlights, which is, you know, I know, like we are guilty of once in a while, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm guilty every week. It's just that <laughs> if I find it interesting, then I will make the effort to watch like the full episode. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, again, like 
talk about Roman Reigns, we were talking just about the championship, but what about the Roman Reigns bloodline drama that came right Ooh. after SmackDown, you, bro? You know what? I love that they have proven me wrong time and time again. Going all mm. the way back to, you know, just slightly post-pandemic, we are like, oh, okay, this um, this bloodline thing getting a bit stale. Uh. And then Sami Zayn injected a... A year of storyline into it, right? And after Sami Zayn and WrestleMania, it's okay lah, you know, now now boring already lah, they're running out of steam. And then now we have the Jay Uso storyline and then the brother turned on them with the Samoan Spike. I'm like, I did not realize I would be so invested again. Yeah, and then like somebody, I think one of the WWE Instagram pages suddenly put the Captain America Civil War <laughs> poster. And I'm like, yeah, that's, this is it. This summer is going to be the Civil War of the blood. I think that's a pretty dope storyline to carry us through the summer. Yeah, and it's a really good distraction. Like we know that, you know, Roman's title is not at stake here, but it's about the story now more than anything, right? It's not about the title per se. So yes, he's going to sit on the title, but... Beyond that, though, like, how do they continue making this relevant? I feel like, bro, mm. I have a crazy booking idea going all the way up to SummerSlam okay. that can tie in this whole Bloodline storyline and bring back a few of our so-called uh, star star performers from the previous storylines involving the Bloodline, okay. All right? Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Listen to me out. So, like... Previously, it was all about Jay that's unsure whether to stay or leave the bloodline. And it was Jimmy trying to like convert him, right? Mm-hmm. And now, of course, the tables have been turned. I think they've done a brilliant job in switching the roles of everyone. So now Jimmy is the so-called like the re- re- rebel and yeah. like Jay is trying to keep the peace. Mm. And then after Jay basically was trying to beg everyone to like calm down and even Jimmy said like, you know, let's forgive each other, let's run this place together. Mm. And when Roman Reigns gave the hug and he said no, I was like, oh shit, okay, uh-huh. I know, I know this, we are going to start some shit here. So of course, we saw Solo turn on them. So the lines have clearly been drawn. Mm. The Usos against Roman and Solo, right? Yeah. But, so now, but at the end of yep. SmackDown, remember there's still that shot of Roman saying to Solo, uh, saying to Paul, Jay knows knows what to do. He will do what he has always done. And that's, yeah. Know, join me. Yeah, correct. So I feel like, okay, the next big show is what? Um, let me see. The bank. next big show, Money in the Bank, right? How about this? So, uh, of course, they, they will tease for a couple of weeks where Jay doesn't know what to do, right? Yeah. Jay is like... Uh, I don't okay. know whether to go with my brother or go with blah, blah, blah. And then they're going to book this match. It's going to be Roman Reigns versus Jimmy Uso for the world title. Right? Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe they're going to make like Jay have like a very like conflicted role right in the middle of it. Maybe they're going to make him the special guest referee. <laughs> well, why not a tag team match, bro? No, the reason why I want to save the ta- tag team match is because I have another booking idea for oh, this. Oh, boy. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so hear me out, hear me. So, so G, so they're still gonna put Jay in this precarious position where he doesn't know. He needs to decide whether to like call it down the middle, like cheat and let um, Roman win, or like stand up for his brother and let give him the chance of the title. And then they're gonna they're gonna make it like a loser goes home, or like if Jay lose, if Jay lo- Jimmy loses, he has to leave WWE or some crazy shit like that, yeah, yeah. So, um, of course, Jimmy like goes toe to toe with uh, Roman Reigns they go bell to bell it makes all the way till the end and then when the time comes when Jimmy was supposed to win Jay is like I I can't do it I gotta listen to Roman Reigns and then like Jay betrays Jimmy oh my god okay yeah but not betray in like a very obvious way. Like yeah, he yeah. doesn't do anything. Like for example, maybe maybe Roman Reigns has like a steel chair or like has a freaking sledgehammer and he's going to like destroy Jimmy. And like instead of Jay standing up for his brother, he just turns away and like he closes his eyes or something like that, you know? I so, See, I don't know if that is something that his character would do because, you know, they protected each other before. If you're talking about like, you know, actually being destroyed by Roman Reigns, I think he would step in. I think that has always been the tipping point, right? Oh, okay. Then if that's the way, right, maybe he wanted to save his brother, mm. but just as he was like making the move to like protect him, he gets held back by Solo. So right. he he has to watch his brother get like chest shot to the head or what. And like, he's basically done. He's gone. So his brother has been taken out of action, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's when like, 
he just loses it lah. So he mm. goes on the rampage and like attacks uh, Solo and then like takes the chair and then attacks uh, Roman Reigns. So okay, so go- going out of Money in the Bank, yep. like you, the, the last thing you see is like uh, him helping his brother out of the arena or like crying to his brother. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. While, while essentially Roman like escapes with the title but he just got his ass handed to him by Jay. So now the story finally shifts to it all goes back to Jay versus Roman again with Jimmy mm. out of the picture, right? Right, right. And of course, Solo being that, that, that of course, uh, third party, that unknown quantity. While this is happening in the main event, guess who wins Money in the Bank, bro? Solo or Sammy or Kevin? No, who? Cody Rhodes. Oh, right. Okay, because I feel like even though there's the rumors is that Roman, uh, uh, Cody and Brock is gonna go to SummerSlam, I feel it should be Cody and Brock at uh O2 Arena at Money in the Bank as one of like the opening matches mm-hmm. or like one of the big matches lah. So he becomes like he finally defeats Co- uh Brock on Money in the Bank, and then he becomes surprise entrance and wins. Um, Ooh. what do you call it? Yeah. Money so now. Bank. Mm. Yeah, so now now Cody is the unknown quantity, right? And going into SummerSlam, yeah. Jay versus Roman, it's set. So that means Jay is like, I'm going to take him down no matter yeah. what. I'm going to take him for the title. And while that is happening, right, he has all his past opponents that he kind of betrayed for Roman Reigns come and step up to him and like, you know what? Go do it. So like he has that one-on-one confrontation with Sami Zayn, mm. and Sami Zayn now say this is your time. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Cody Rhodes will be like, "I'm gonna wait for you. You become the champion. I'm gonna fight you." And you know, blah blah blah. So going to SummerSlam, the hype is all for G. And Roman is like left with literally just Paul Heyman and like Solo to defend him. He's vulnerable. He's like Voldemort after everyone take all the whole cruxes from him, bro. Yeah, yeah. He's got no more <laughs> soul left, you know. Yeah, so my thinking is towards mm. the end of SummerSlam when it's Jay and Roman for the world, uh, for the WWE Universal title at, at the main event, that is finally when one by one the final two leaves him. Paul Heyman runs back to Brock Lesnar. It's jumping off a sinking ship. Solo finally gets convinced by Jay, like, come back to us, come back to us. And like maybe 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 in the weeks leading up to SummerSlam, mm. since Solo was the only one left, Roman Reigns keep bullying him instead. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, so like Solo gives the Solo moment spike to Roman Reigns. Like, Fuck it, man. So now, right, Jay is literally inches away from winning the world title, uh-huh. but somehow, right, Roman still wins. <laughs> okay, I mean, shit. That that's that's beautiful, but. Mm-hmm. The one thing that stops me from believing and buying this as the main event, as mm-hmm. even happening to begin with, Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso, the marquee match at SummerSlam. Honestly, honestly, yes, I'm I'm serious, bro. <laughs> no, no, I can I will have to disagree with you there. I mean, as much as that would be beautiful, it's not mm-hmm. going to happen. Like, you know, yeah, okay, a lot can happen between now and SummerSlam. But I think the main event, Jey Uso thing, even when it happened the first time, it was mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, I can, like, you, you can see this is a side quest. You know, it's not it's not a main event. While I feel like that, that will tell the story full circle, mm-hmm. I actually agree with Mr. Young. I agree with you to a certain extent. Mm. That is why, right, I book Roman Reigns to still win yeah. in that match. So... He doesn't, Jay doesn't win outright and beat him for the title, but he gets a moral victory because Roman, in his effort to keep the world title, he loses everything. His family, right. he, he, he loses. Jay, Jay finally walks out like a renewed man, like I stood up to my cousin. So even though Jay loses, he can walk out with his head held high. Held high and now Roman is in the middle of the ring with nothing but a world title, right? Mm. Guess what happens next? What? Adrenaline oh, in my soul. Okay, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That's, uh-huh. the other, that's the other thing I have a problem with. I don't think uh-huh. Cody will ever cash in in that way. I think Cody is the sort of person who will be like a John Cena. I will cash in, but I will tell you when the match is. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I mean, definitely in his character for him to like have like a very honourable no, one-on-one yeah. like, match, I, right? I really don't believe that Cody would cash in and be that like, oh, run in... 
after you know Roman has had that match. So I, mm, as much as that sounds cool, I don't even think Cody should win Money in the Bank. I think well, Brock should screw him out of Money in the Bank. So we push this all the way even further. Mm, I I I think that's a fair you know um fair fair reasoning as well. I think that could be a, a another way they can go about it. The reason why I. I had this thought that Cody should cash in and like destroy and humiliate Roman once he loses all of his family members. It's because of that one promo that he cut right before WrestleMania. Remember he said like, you are going to be a, 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 a head without a table, right. a, a, a chief without a tribe, and okay. your family's all going to leave you. But at SummerSlam, why not at WrestleMania? Like, Because... Again, WWE wanted to hit that 1,000 mark. I think they, they're just oh. a stickler for that record, right? right so right, now right. that the 1,000 mark is there, I think they can start booking the end of Roman's uh-huh. title reign. Uh-huh. And yeah, so so even though, yes, Cody, with his character, will want an honorable victory, I feel like it's almost... He wants to punish Roman, right? Okay, this is the this is what you deserve. Because, mm. yes, finally, I've, sh- I've proven to you. You see, one by one, all your family walk away from you. And like, as Jay is walking to the back, right? And then that music hits, right? Yep. And and like imagine they pass by each other on the rampway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and then Jay looks at him and like gives him the nod, like yeah, right. go for it. This is your time. No one's gonna no one's gonna stop you. And yeah, I think that that I think that Ooh. would just be like a great way. What do you think of that whole storyline, my brother? Um, I like it. I like the idea. I just don't think it will happen. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I just don't think from a WWE booking standpoint that it was it will happen. I feel like the blow off will be at WrestleMania. Like obviously they're still angling for. The Rock, right? And mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about it, like, okay, I like the idea of him losing family one by one by one. Mm-hmm. I also like the fact that, you know, you still have certain um, Uso's dad to call upon if you want uh, to like, yes. thicken the plot a bit, you know? Oh and my then, God. What, uh, what if Rikishi turns on Jay? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So I was thinking, so why, why don't like they bring back Rikishi for this storyline yeah, or yeah, like, yeah. Uh, that would be really, really cool. I wouldn't even mind like you know the the wild sub moments like his father and his uncle like at the end when he loses everything they all come out and they actually take and rip away the layer from oh, him the layer, yeah. and like yeah you're no longer the tribal chief bro you have brought dishonor to the family I think that would be really really dope I mean obviously the end game the, the ideal situation is The Rock shows up at the end finally to challenge Roman Reigns right that, like that's the money match at this point do yeah. you think that's still on the cards on the table at all? I feel if Roman loses the title, mm. then I think they can still book Roman versus The Rock without the title because then the story is nothing about the title. It's more but, about legacy and the family. But I'll be seeing already. You know what I mean? It does take a bit of the the, the, the vibe off of it. Unless, unless SummerSlam main event is Rock versus Roman Reigns. And then, you know, Rock obviously mm-hmm. can't win the title. Like, it makes no sense for him to win, right? My, yeah, my, my only thing against it is because I feel like the Rock coming in is a bit like Captain Marvel, you know. Mm, it's like, OP, OP. yeah, yeah. Like after everyone, everything happened in Infinity War, everyone died. Then Captain Marvel come back, like a bit waste time, like, like why you come now, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I feel like him, him coming at the end will only make sense when it's no longer about title. It's more about mm. ending his reign in the family. So it's like a family feud, and that makes sense, right? For example, next year WrestleMania, right? Yep. One night can be headlined by you know the world. Uh, the WWE Universal title with Cody Rhodes on top fighting Gunther or whatnot and then uh, unfortunately Seth Rollins will be at the opening sh- opening match la, even sure. though we'll be <laughs> <laughs> and then the second night can all be all about the bloodline drama so by this time when Roman fights The Rock right it's more of like the Roman has really lost the title he's yeah. a man deranged and he just set out to destroy the bloodline mm. like every member of the bloodline so that he can so I guess what happens after SummerSlam will be one by one Roman like beats Jay until he just gone or like oh, like everyone already disappear even Solo maybe the last stand to like defeat Roman and maybe at um, maybe at the Royal Rumble they have a last man standing match sure. and like, Roman really destroys all of them right and then like no one left he's like okay I'm just gonna be the head of this table yeah. without anyone to rule I don't mind being like a, a king without his kingdom right yeah. and then at Roman the rock comes back to defend the honour of the Samoan bloodline that makes sense Ooh, I like it foreign for Booker of 2023 I mean let's go we forgot about <laughs> one more Samoan who bro 
Jo. Jo. <laughs> jo is like this one cousin that no one remembers at the other show. Like. Poor he's fella. The only, he's the only Samoan that's not related to any of these guys. Oh, can you imagine if he actually was back in the WWE and he... Like, oh man, the promos, he could cut anyway. But that that's... um. Really fantasy booking already at this point. So. Didn't didn't like Samoa Joe was like the only one that actually had Roman Reigns number. I think that would be do- damn dope though. Yeah, right. Um, obviously, the fact that we can book so many different scenarios goes to show that right now the WWE is in a very interesting spot. It's mm-hmm, a mm-hmm, very mm-hmm. good spot where, okay, the, and to Papa H's credit, he's set it up where there are so many permutations that could possibly headline, right? Like, yeah. like you wouldn't mind seeing Jay versus uh, Roman at this point. And, you know, yeah. maybe call me Vince, but I'm still not convinced that that is uh, the way to go. You still need bigger names and stuff like that. Tamina, yeah. wow, wow, hey, stop it. Like, <laughs> yeah, Tamina, uh, just Roman Reigns. And they might as well bring Nia Jax, right? Come on. Uh, I'm not like Mer. Yeah, can you imagine at the end of SummerSlam and all that stuff <laughs> happened already? Instead of Cody Rhodes, I'm not like most girl. Na, 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 na. Uh, what? <laughs> I think, I think, uh, what, what's our, 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 what's our brother? Um, our, our, our guy, he will huh? go through another feat. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe Connor Pro. Oh, Joe, right, right, right. Yeah, uh, pro guy. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. it is what it is. Like, I mean, you know, moving ahead, now the mm-hmm. bloodline saga has gotten even juicier. I'm sure at some point we will see Rikishi come back, lah. You know, and I think so too. I think it makes complete sense for him to have some sort of part of it. Maybe it can be a whole like, all right, you know, uh, Jay can't get Jimmy to come back to rejoin. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe Roman's like, call Rikishi, call your dad, mm. and then he'll show up on Raw <laughs> or I mean on SmackDown, and maybe at some point Roman Reigns beats up. Rikishi, and that could really be the catalyst that lights the fire, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, thanks, Fias. Uh, AEW, hi, this man. Appreciate, <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah. There you go. Uh, well, you know, one thing people was they were talking about, like, you know, how many Samoans can they drag out from the family that they can join, right? Bro, there's one big, there's one big guy that is like on on New Japan. There's one guy that's on MLW. All of this can factor to the storyline if they want, you know? Okay, uh, they, they are, see, that's the difference between AEW and WWE booking. AEW would absolutely do this type of shit and then bring <laughs> in don't know who, don't know who, but then the crowd would be like, the mainstream crowd wouldn't know who the hell these people are. The only mm. reason this works with Jimmy and Jay, because Jimmy and Jay have been in the WWE forever, the audience mm. knows who these two are, right? Yeah, they Even know. bringing... Bringing in Solo also was actually a risk, yep. but they, they've managed to really, you know, elevate him as well. Yeah, because they've told the story, he is the younger mm. brother, blah, 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 right? You know, and Paul Heyman, you know, I never knew that Paul Heyman was, uh, you know, instrumental with the uh, the, the Anuai family, like he, you know, uh, was a manager to them way back when. Yeah. To the People parents. managed the Wild Samoans yeah. as well for a period, yeah. But they told the story. Big WWE is very good at telling stories. AEW, mm. if, if, if this were AEW, they would have expected you to understand and know that already. It would have been anarchy in the arena between the bloodline. And, uh, and everyone exploding, uh, oh, exploding lay. They put the lay on something like, boom! <laughs> no, bro, the hit gone, bro. If you exploit the hit. Uh, finish him. Oh, dear God. Okay, okay. But, but I think overall, um, like I said, if everything goes well for us wrestling fans, we have AEW, that whole storyline with CM Punk return to tide us over over in AEW. And of course, this whole drama with the bloodline going over in WWE, it will be a great time for us wrestling fans for sure. I think so. I think so too. And, uh, you know, things are on the up and up. La. I mean, we got a couple of weeks to go before Forbidden Door. I'm not looking forward to Forbidden Door. I'm more looking forward to Money in the Bank at this point. But you know why. You know, yeah, uh, but, I, understand, but, I understand. Yeah, if you are a fan of Japanese wrestling and these sort of quote unquote dream matches, I'm sure Forbidden Door will be an exciting uh, pay per view as well. Yeah, ACOW said there is a fourth Uso brother. Can somebody, can somebody tell us who this is? Because <laughs> I don't no. think I, I. Isn't that the who? The is it the uh, Jacob Fatu guy? Yeah, is it, is it Jacob? Yeah, is it Jacob Fatu? I'm not too sure, but somebody can tell us in the chat. But if that is the guy, then I know a lot of people are very high up on him. Mm-hmm. So, well, but he's the he's the guy that actually looked like a wild Samoan, bro. To be honest, but like, like I said, you know, you would have to tell his story then, and mm. you know, I, I think WWE are okay, lah. They can just uh, look. 
this is pro wrestling. This is a mm. world where Kane and Undertaker are brothers. You mean to tell me you can't find somebody who to, to join the bloodline and not actually have them be blood brothers? Come on. This is storytelling, yeah. right? That's true. That's true. Uh, okay, so I got <laughs> let, we got two questions on the chat, bro. Let, let's answer both of them. So sure. Rishi says, realistically, when will Reigns drop the title? According to you, what do you think? Uh, you said SummerSlam, right? I, I will hold it all the way to Rumble or Mania. Oh, uh, Okay. Okay, I think both, I think there's possibilities to tell the stories to extend yeah. until then. Mm. Okay, and uh, wow, uh, Fias Grinder, how? Uncle Howdy and The Fiend, how does he factor into all this, bro? What is, is that? How does it affect in the Howdy's legacy? <laughs> uh, okay, so, so, so I know already, I know how you can write this in, right? Mm-hmm. You have the Rikishi had a one night stand with some random white girl from the swamp and then they, they buffed uh, Uncle Howdy and that whole clan, The Fiend and Bray Wyatt. Ah, and then he abandoned them in the swamp and that's why Bray Wyatt is so messed up in the head. And then... <laughs> and, and so, he's Bray Wyatt is actually part of the bloodline. And then we bring him into the bloodline, bro. That's it. That's Mr. Young for best. Vince uh, Russo. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, see, uh, Triple H will make Sami Zayn a believable member of the bloodline. But Mr. Young will make Bray Wyatt a <laughs> Yes. Yes. Mr. Young will make Bray Wyatt a member of the bloodline. You just watched. Oh, dear God. Okay. Um, okay. At this point, I have no idea what is going on with Bray Wyatt, the Anka Howdy, all that nonsense, you know? Like, obviously, Bray Wyatt was a little bit too creative for yeah. the movie he's liking. And seeing what he did with, like, the Anka Howdy and all that stuff, I can see why. So, mm. at this point, like, is he... We don't know what happened to him, right? Is Like, is he injured or does he need time off again? whether it's taken off TV because uh, I have a feeling it might be affected by our favourite girl Alexa Bliss unexpected announcement that she got pregnant right wait, wait, but what does that have to do like I know they're friends lah, but you know no no because I feel that they were booking it in such a way where they are going to bring them back together as like a package like uh, the Fiend and the Fiendess no no together. but for all intents and purposes you didn't have to make them um, come together what it's Bray Wyatt mm. and then he, whoever, I, I mean, everyone assuming it was Bo Dallas as Uncle Howdy. Like, literally the two of them dropped, disappeared off the face of the earth. Yeah, I'm wondering aloud as well, like, what is the creative decision behind that and mm. how are they going to realistically bring it, bring them back in and, like, explain everything? Because, right, this Bray Wyatt, right, I think he got the best deal ever, bro. They make him give a amazing return. Yeah. He only had to do one match, you know, in his entire run, this past, bro. like, run. He, he's yeah. the CM Punk, He's the CM Punk of the WWE. Come in, you know, ruffle some feathers, disappear. Yes, yeah. And like, what, his match was what? The pitch back. That was the, literally the only match he ever had, right? This yeah. past year. They say, okay, I've heard this as well, right? They say he's ill or unwell. And that's what happened to him for Mania. That's why, you know, very poor thing mm. about Bobby Lashley. He didn't have a match. So, like, when you talk about unwell, like, are you talking about, like, I, I don't want to say too much because who knows, maybe he does have some sort of life-threatening illness or is it mm. mental... Uh, unwell, mentally unwell. Mm. Like, you know, he wasn't in the right frame of mind. We have no <sighs> idea. So it's very hard to even, you know, talk about because we don't know what's yeah. the deal with yeah. him. Yeah. I'd rather, I rather not comment as well if mm. you're unaware of the full picture of the whole situation. But what I can say is this. I feel like if he returns, right, and he was really hinting on being more of a real character or like more reality-based. I hope he leans into that and just be an old-school wrestler. Be like freaking uh, Brody Lee and just wrestle he, again. He was doing it for a few weeks. Remember when he first came back and it was mm. actually interesting? Talking, like he, yeah. He could talk you into a match where there was no match. He was literally going to wrestle himself and he, he, <laughs> he talked you into it, right? But then it just dragged and dragged and dragged and dragged. And I don't know what it is. If it was mm-hmm. a creative problem, if he himself didn't like, you know, um, it cannot be that he called the shots on that because this is WWE at the end of the day, right? So I, yeah, you have yeah. to blame WWE uh, at some point for the Maybe weird he, booking. What if his feelings just got hurt because Brock Lesnar turned him down? It's okay, like then, then that one is like, okay, you're in the wrestling business, lah. Grow up, lah. <laughs> if that's really truly the case, I right? I know like there are rumors, right? Like, oh, Brock yeah, Lesnar yeah. turned him down, so he like, ooh, cry. You know, um, that'd be funny, yo. LA Knight, look at, see, this 
is testament to LA Knight's bulletproofness or just how talented he is. He can bounce back from a shit feud like that and actually uh-huh. get... And the fact is, they book LA Knight into the ground for whatever reason, who don't know who doesn't like LA Knight there. But uh-huh. he's managed to get himself over despite that. Yeah, bro, he's getting better, bro. If you watch SmackDown last week, he actually won his qualifying match in Money in the Bank. And he got and- cheered. Yeah, he got cheered. Even though, like, he's supposed to be the de facto heel and yep. apparently people are piping in booze for him. But that guy, I tell you, he's going to be the breakout wrestler of this yep. year, bro. Somehow. I hope so. If he wins Money in the Bank, actually, you know what? I would love if he yeah. wins Money in the Bank. There you go. Rishi also agrees. Uh, LA Knight, Money in the Bank. Yeah. Bro, I think it would be a great Money in the Bank career. I think the promos he can cut, like, yes. the kind of arrogance that he will and bro I think his song like, is stuck in my head every time I play WWE 2K right it's like GTA for me man <laughs> yeah I love it I love it yeah uh. I hope I, I also agree I hope he wins money in the bank and then you know they do something with him and if anything right yeah lah he doesn't have to be involved in the bloodline stuff he can go and challenge Seth Rollins he if, if anything right this new world heavyweight championship that Seth Rollins has it's quite mm-hmm. obvious that no, it, it's very up for grabs and you could mm. elevate so many deserving talent. Yeah, And Raw I agree. suddenly becomes super interesting. Yeah, because finally they have a reason to fight at the top of the card, right? Mm. And they have a chance to elevate a lot of people. So, um, if okay, so I watched a bit of highlights from Raw this past week and it seems like they are angling towards Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor for the title. Sure. Yeah, and apparently there was already a start of hints of dissension between the Judgment Day because um, Damien Priest was challenging the title tonight, right? Yeah. And then he said to like, uh, I think maybe Seth Rollins was playing mind games and saying like how all of you can't even beat me without each other's help. Right. And then he said something like a throwaway line like, hey, I can beat you. I don't even need Finn's help. I can do it myself. And then oh. Finn gave the look like, Ooh, really? What? Oh, Ooh. okay. Uh, yeah, and also it seems like with uh, Finn involved in the world title picture, they might even bring Dominic as like a potential challenger, like a short feud. I think it's quite funny like, if that's no, the case. It's, it's, yeah, it's funny. Remember that scene last week where he was like, mm. maybe Dom will challenge and then the crowd just laugh. <laughs> the crowd just, ha, ha, ha. It was, the crowd would be like, no. No, but he is such a good, like, yeah, you definitely, you know what that is? That is like a raw main event. You build up for a couple of weeks, Dominic yeah. versus Rollins, you know, and, Obviously, he's not going to win, but still. But plus, they, plus, those two they, have yeah. had history before. Don't forget. Yeah, they've had actually a great SummerSlam match in the pan- pandemic, right? Yeah, the wow. Uh, you know, you took my dad's eye. I don't care about my dad, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, everything leading up to that is quite funny. So yeah, they, I think Raw with Judgment Day as like the top heel faction is good. Mm. Don't forget, they have Gunther. So Gunther apparently mm. is like hanging around with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. So we might be seeing more interactions. We could even see like... Uh, we know that the Sami Zayn and KO is going to fight with um, the yeah. Imperium for the World Tag Team titles. But what if we transition to a semi zane and Kunta I think that would be pretty dope. I think so too. Like, you know, maybe a, KO takes a, good, a break. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good landing point for them like, after the bloodline situation, you know? I mean, but if the, that's the problem with the Imperium faction though, right? Like, right now you have one main guy and two lackeys. Literally have done nothing. Uh, Kaiser and Giovanni. The, or what would they call him? You just made fun of the fact that he was bald. Oh, uh... Previously, his name wasn't Giovanni Da Vinci. It was like Fabian Eichner, right? No, yeah, that was his old name. Now he's Giovanni Vinci. Oh, they call him Baldi, ah. Baldi. Like, that's the thing. Like, they've been portrayed as nothing but jobbers and lackeys. So it's... eh, Yeah, yeah, it makes more sense for Sammy or Kevin to go up against uh, uh, Gunter Gunter. for the IC title. But what if, what if, because of Gunter, his lackeys win the Tag Team Championships? Mm. hold all the goal. Well, that'll be interesting. Um, And that's a way to elevate both of them because yeah. we don't deny... I think Ludwig actually got some personality hidden there somewhere in his born villain face. I think he can let, let elevate himself for sure. Bro, bro, he's he Every time he does the introduction of Gunther, the crowd boo him non-stop. Yeah. It's only the the Eichner, aka Giovanni. Like, he literally stand there and do nothing, man. I like I like his fashion model gimmick in NXT though. Where he had that very brief run as a fashion model. That was funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They uh, repackage him right, and then like yeah, I don't know about that though. Yeah, 
Do you, do you see their entrance though? I only just notice it. I don't I don't know whether I'm very slow, but when Imperian does his entrance and like uh, Gunther takes off his coat and then he and then Ludwig catches it mid air and throws it around, yeah. right? Yes, yes, It's yes. Fucking smooth and solid, bro. I love it. I just uh, notice it. Uh, then again, what is Giovanni doing? He doesn't <laughs> even do that. He just stand there egg ball. Ay, doesn't yo, say anything. Bro. Egg. Poor fella lah, poor fella, poor fella. Cannot call out by Kevin Owens for it. Hey, Irvin, welcome, man. Super late, no uh, worries. You can always catch up video on demand on YouTube or listen to the podcast via uh, Spotify. Yeah, no worries. Today, today is a very short episode. Actually, the time flew by. It's only one and a half hours, but I feel we covered everything we needed to cover this week. Is there anything else on chat that you all want us to talk about before we move on? Uh, I think that A, we've covered quite a lot already. And yes, we need a bit of a detox after last week, right? But yeah, for as sure. always, if you want to talk about anything wrestling related, you can head over to our Discord channel. Link is in the bio. And yes. No, la, Giovanni doesn't look like Johnny Sins. Come on. <laughs> bro, like that, every single ball guy look like Johnny Sins. Come on. Don't look, stereotype ball guys. Bro. WWE already has a Johnny Sins, okay? And that is Adam Pierce. Uh, yes, literally. He's probably doing that as his side hustle. He only just does uh, commissioner work, so it's fine. He is actually yeah. Johnny Sin's body double, huh? huh? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, somebody reminded me as well. Remember last week we talked about VPW, Vietnam Pro Wrestling, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give a shout out to them because actually, uh, first, they, they, they literally clip our that, that segment that we talk about them and gave Vietnamese subtitles to us nice. and gave us a shout out. So thank you so much to Vietnam Pro Wrestling. And I heard... Our guys, you know, the Ring of Rebirth guys, Eurasian Dragon and Big Jack, actually won the VPW Tag Team titles over there in Ho Chi Minh, bro. Yes, I saw. Our congratulations to them. They went over there and won as heels, if I'm not mistaken. So Yes, yes. It's really territory style, bro. Come here as yeah. faces, go there as heels. Interesting. Okay, two more things. Uh, Irvin says, Ludwig dating Tiffany Stratton. He win already. Wow. I did not know that. And yes, you are right. He absolutely has won. I watched uh, NXT, by the way. Just mm. to, uh, very quickly mentioned as well. Uh, it was a fun show. It's like... Mm. How was it? It was a good alternative to AEW. <laughs> but really? Okay. It, it was a very good alternative to AEW. Tiffany Stratton definitely has it. Like, mm. she has the Mandy Rose vibe. I don't know if she has the OnlyFans vibe, but she definitely has the Mandy Rose vibe. Uh, vibe, you know, athletic looking, beautiful woman, uh, sort of a deal, right? And the Dragonov Dijak match. <sighs> so you okay. watched it, you you watched the NXT uh, Battleground, is it? Yes, I watched NXT Battleground. Mm-hmm. Um, How was it? Here's the thing about that match. Like, we, you know, we talk about this going back full circle, right? To like looking at mm. someone like Dragonov, who is small mm-hmm. and skinny, but he is lean and he is not so. Like you look at him, he looks like he will do, he will bite your face, he will you know, he will go to all lengths to try to hurt you. There was this one yeah. spot I really thought was kind of overboard, but then I'm like, okay, like, I can buy it because his character is, he's just so crazy that he'll do anything, right? It's uh-huh. where uh, Dijek was like, the, he wasn't under the table, but he was like holding the table up like this, like, uh, you know, like lifting the table off himself. And uh-huh. then um, Dragunov charges at him, hit butts, Threw the table into Dijak. I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> <Hey. laughs> who's that? Who's that guy with the ball hit? Is it the the one that does five thousand push ups, five thousand sit ups, and then run ten miles a day? Is uh. that anime, lah, bro? Okay. <laughs> the bota, right, right. the bota guy. I forgot what's his name, but what, One Punch Man. Ah, uh, the One Punch Man. Is that him trying to be like One Punch Man? Like he can kick everything with his head or something. I don't know. I, I don't know, but it, it looked ridiculous. He looked like he busted himself wide open with it. Like, or I think, no, he cut his chin. Like he was bleeding from his chin. I'm like, wow, that seems a bit like... A bit too much. Log- logically, it doesn't make sense. Why would you charge at somebody and throw your head through a table? Unless your head is made out of iron and titanium, bro. Bro, you never know. He's not Samoan. Only Samoans can do this. Don't try to steal Samoan. Okay, you know what? Uh, Ilya Dragunov is the a member of the bloodline. Yeah. No, the thing, conclusive yeah. proof. The thing about Ilya, right, he looks like he like a gargoyle, you know, like he just yeah, this, yeah. Uh, when you watch a horror movie, uh, he's that yeah. demonic man-child that can just bite you and kill you. Yeah, yeah. So like, if you're small, but then you have that kind of aura, then you, yeah. okay, fine. I, yeah, we yeah. can kind of like look past it. Yeah. So yeah, good for him. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed the hell out of the match. They beat the 
piss out of each other. <laughs> uh, part of me wishes that uh, at least like be for a title or something like you know when he gets beat up by um uh, Gunther Ilya. for example, at least it's for the NXT UK title or some damn title. Mm. This one is mm. they just black feud and then they beat the living piss out of each other. I'm like oh my god, and then you see the bruises and the welts on them. Nice. Ooh. Did did you uh, watch the past week's NXT though, or was it just Battleground? No, I just watched Battleground. I didn't have time to watch the past week. Uh, Maybe 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 I can mention something. Um, apparently our dear friend uh Baron Corbin I actually saw. returned, yep. and I think he's in the main event or like um attacking um him our our guy Carmelo Hayes. Well, it makes sense. You can't have Carmelo Hayes versus Braun Breaker over and over and over again, like You know, you need to give that a rest. And Carmelo yeah, yeah. Hayes needs a, a veteran to you know work with. And what has Baron Corbin been doing on the main roster? Nothing, right? Nothing, right? I, I don't know whether they're gonna keep that happy Corbin gimmick or bring back his lone wolf gimmick from NXT. But that guy needs a new change of environment, so I don't blame him, yeah. like. like you know, and Triple H is very happy to do it, right? Like he's done so mm. with Apollo Cruz. You know, Apollo Cruz is back on Raw. What the hell is he doing now? Don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, poor guy, poor guy. Oh, also another guy from uh, that went back down to NXT after his uh, very very effort in Saudi Arabia our guy Mustafa Ali yes, is back yes. NXT I, I think he has never really had a proper run in NXT I think this might do him good actually bro if I'm not mistaken he was always a 205 guy he was never on NXT like he was rarely on NXT so yeah like he doesn't have that NXT quote unquote uh, history right so yeah could mm-hmm. be a good run for him and if anything yeah. yeah let him be there to teach some of the new guys and you know um yeah, yeah. Show, show off a bit lah, you know? Maybe him as NXT champion, I think yeah. would be pretty great veteran, like how Dolph Ziggler went down a couple of years mm. ago. Correct. Yeah, yeah. why and, not, why and, not? You know, work with Carmelo Hayes, and then maybe in the future, they move back up together, and you know, they can work together again. But anyway, uh, so mm-hmm. all that being said, I think it's time to put a bow on today's episode. Everybody, once again, thank you for spending your Tuesday afternoon with us. It's a, bro, it's a busy, busy month lah, because you know, in the US, it's summer, right? Yes. Start of summer and in Singapore it's the school holidays so like everything all the big movies are out all the big games Diablo 4 launched today officially. Nice. Um, Gonna be busy then. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my god. Bro I'm like up to my balls in you know content to create and games to play and things to watch so. It's, It's a good life bro. Come on. It is, but also at the same time, it's like, can wrestling hold my attention with all Mm, these other mm. distractions? Like we've talked about before, it is also, it is a form of entertainment, right? And all these other things are going to distract you. Can it hold your attention? Um, We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, man. Well, for sure, I think what we can look forward to this June is probably, of course, AEW Collision, June 17. Uh, we'll definitely have to react to that. We'll see what happens, CM Punk does. And uh, I think end of the month, we'll have Forbidden Door. And July 1st is Money in the Bank. So that we can... That will, can will be an interesting one. So we have back to back. So yeah. one week it will be Forbidden Door. The next weekend it will be Money in the Bank. And then so, a- AEW Fight Forever. Oh my god, yeah. So, okay, so let's just put it as the end of June is going to be pretty packed uh, a couple of weeks for us on the podcast. But you know what, Maybe we, we, can, we can take a rest, you know. I think we got a detox for a bit, but we'll definitely be back to cover all this breaking news as well. Absolutely. And if anything else, if our schedules get busy, you can always find us on the Discord or on our social media. So come and follow us on our social media accounts if you haven't already. Links are all in the description. All right. Um, Dave Royalty says, hydrate and take care. Everybody, please do that. The weather has been a little bit punishing, hot AF when it's yes. not raining. So yes, drink lots of water, everybody. Yeah, man, I just actually recovered from sickness. So I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I already kind of succumbed to the crazy weather changes. So mm-hmm. I hope everyone, please take care of yourself, drink lots of water, and uh, check out our Patreon, check out our Discord. Um, you know, shout out to everyone on our Discord who keeps sending us wrestling news every single day. It's popping there every single day. So thank you, guys. Absolutely. All right, uh, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. As always, it is Mr. Young. And it's foreign in the building. Take care. Let me see you try.